Hello doctors, welcome. This video is the part 2 on our dental chair repair series on water leakage. In this video, we will discuss the following points. Please remember, these are the continuation of the points after video 1. Point number 7. Must have hardware or equipment for any routine repair in a dental clinic. Number 8. Simple spare parts or components required to repair water leakage yourself. Number 9. Type and size of pipe used in dental chair. Number 10. Types of pipes leakage and its solutions. Number 11. Easy and simple steps to repair the water leakage yourself. And last number 12. How to dry circuits or equipments if water spills on it. Doctors, I strongly suggest you all to have a look at the video part number 1 in order to understand every detail of this video part 2. And as always, please understand this is an educational and a technical video and you should form a habit of never skipping forward in any of such kind of educational or technical videos because you will always miss out on many minor and important details of that educational video in this case regarding this dental chair repair video. So once again, hello doctors, I am Dr. Tarun Mavadia from Aksa Dental Academy. Let's begin. The first point of this video is number seven, must have hardware or equipments for any routine repairs in a dental clinic. Doctors, I strongly suggest to every dentist, you all should compulsorily have the following amount of tools in your dental clinic. Number 1. Screwdriver set. Number 2. Allen key set. Number 3. Pliers. Number 4. Adjustable spanner. Number 5. Tie tags. Number 6. Copper wire. Number 7. Wire pillar. Number 8. Teflon tape. Number 9. Extra screws. Number 10. Pipe joiners. Number 11. Blade. Number 12 scissors and number 13 electric tape doctors by having the following tools in your own dental clinic you can repair many of the issues in your dental clinic or your assistant can do the repairs with you guiding him or her also doctors we are going to make many such do it yourself dental repair videos in future so with the following tools and our informative technical videos very soon you will be accustomed in repairing most of the issues in your dental clinic yourself the next point is number eight simple spare parts or components required to repair any water leakage yourself these components of pipe repair are number one brass joiners doctors we need such type of brass joiners I prefer such brass joiners more for water leakages repair. Similar kinds of joiners are also available in plastic material, but such plastic joiners are very less durable compared to the brass joiners. So I would suggest you to get only the pure brass joiners. The most common size of joiners that are used in dental chair are 6 mm, 4 mm and 2 mm joiners. Doctors, please remember the 6 mm, 4 mm and 2 mm size which I mentioned here are the inner diameter of the brass joiners. Here is a diagram as a reference for you all to understand what is an inner diameter and what is an outer diameter. For a perfect and tight fit, always the inner diameter of the tube is calculated and a brass joiner of similar size to the inner diameter of the tube is connected inside the tube. So for example, if we have a tube with outer diameter of 6 mm and an inner diameter of 4 mm, then the ideal size of the brass joiner to be used here is of 4 mm. That is the inner diameter of the tube. Also a point to remember here is 4 mm brass joiner will have 4 mm as the inner diameter and the outside braided part of the brass joiner will support and give us a tight fitting inside the tubing. 
and such tight fitting will prevent any water or air leakages when under pressure. Also doctors, repairing tubes with such type of brass joiners particularly requires a very tightening force to give a perfect fit on the joiner and the tube. And this is somewhat difficult compared to our next component that is pneumatic joiners. Second component is pneumatic joiners. These are the pneumatic joiners. They are also available in the size of 6 mm, 4 mm and 2 mm which are most commonly used in any dental chair. Here in case of pneumatic joiners, the outer diameter of the tube is calculated and the outer diameter of the tube will also match the inner diameter of this pneumatic valve and so if a tube has an outer diameter of 6 mm and an inner diameter of 4 mm then the ideal size of pneumatic joiner for this type of tube will be of size 6 mm that is the outer diameter of the tube. I prefer pneumatic joiners more in case of air tube leakages but in case of emergency any type of joiner works very well with any type of air or water leakage from the tubings of the dental chair. When it comes to durability or the strength again a high pressure tubing, the pneumatic joiners are little less durable and can withstand little less pressure compared to the brass joiners. But as such in a general sense they are long lasting. The third component required for the repairing of water leakage from the dental chair is extra tubing. Doctors, in case of minor leakages or small punctures, the brass joiners or the pneumatic joiners work very fine as a repair component. But in some cases like aging of the tube or hardening of the tube due to constant pressure for many years leads to many cracks along the whole tube or sometimes the whole tube crack itself or the plastic material becomes very weak and in such conditions it is always ideal and preferred or it is always must to change the whole tubing. So any a time if such situation arise, you should have few tubing components or few meters of the extra tubing with you. So you can replace out the whole tubing or at least the damaged part of the tubing. And in order to understand this process more clearly, this brings to our next topic that is number 9, types and size of pipes or tubings used in dental chair. Doctors, according to me, the ideal and the best type of tubing that can be used in any dental chair is food grade silicone tubings. These tubings are made from silicone material and they are really very long lasting and there is very less chances of breakage or effect of crackling in such tubings. But one of the disadvantage is this type of tubing are more costlier compared to the regular tubings that are available in the local market. The top end dental chairs or the most premium dental chairs use such type of food grade silicone tubings. One another type of a economical option to such food grade silicone tubings can be extra soft PU type tubings. Nowadays this type of tubings are more used in case of few premiums and top end dental chairs in India. But doctors I would strongly suggest you all to strictly avoid using of the tubings which are used for water filters or any tubing with hard material because such tubes crack up very easily particularly in case of dental use. So for any doctor who are going to get a new dental chair in future after seeing this video, I would suggest you all to strongly insist to your manufacturer or to your technician that whenever they are assembling the, your dental chair in your dental clinic, they should give it a most importance to using of a very good quality if available food grade silicone tubing or at least the top quality one extra soft PU tubings. By doing so, it will help you out in avoiding any such air or water leakages for minimum of 3 to 5 years. Next point in the same topic is regarding the size of the tubings that are used in dental chairs. 
the universal standard size of tubes that are used in dental chair are as follows. Number 1, 8 mm by 6 mm tube. Number 2, 6 mm by 4 mm tube. Number 3, 4 mm by 2 mm tube. And number 4, 3 mm by 1.5 mm tube. Doctors, here in tube number 1, 8 mm by 6 mm indicates that 8 mm is the outer diameter and the 6 mm is the inner diameter. So doctors, these are the four sizes of the tube which are most commonly used in every dental chair and I would suggest you to have at least one meter of each of these sizes in your dental clinic so that in case of any more damage to your tubings, you can change them immediately. Additionally, I have observed that the most common two sizes of the tubings that require more repairs are 6 mm by 4 mm tube and 4 mm by 2 mm tube. So doctors, I would strongly suggest you should have at least these two sizes of the tubings in your dental clinic compulsorily. Doctors, in our next video, I am going to share tips and tricks that will help you out to change the whole tubing of your dental chair yourself. And in that video, I will demonstrate which tubing is used for what along with their common locations. One of the jugards which I would suggest every new dentist whenever they are getting their new chair installed is to ask the technician fitting the dental chair for some quantity of extra tubings as a spare in your dental clinic. And having the samples of the tubings used in your dental chair will help you to purchase them from the market in future. And doctors, if you are going to buy them separately from the market, I would strongly suggest not to buy such tubings in bulk and store them because such tubings with time harden up and they crack up very easily. So it is not a smart decision to buy such tubing in advance that to in bulk quantity and storing them out only have one meter of each tube with you in case of emergency repairs if required and whenever there are any such leakages go to the market and get the new tubings at that point of time. So up till now we already have our tools ready, we have our joiners ready and we have our the tubings or the size of the tubings ready and that brings us to our point number 10 that is types of pipe leakages and its solutions. Doctors, the two main type of damages that occur to the pipes in dental chair are type number one, small cracks or punctures and type number two, pipe hardening due to edge and wear and tear. Coming to the solutions or repairs of such type of damage, first repairing type one that is small punctures or cracks. Such types of small cracks generally occurs at the junctions or the band of the tubing along the dental chair and most common of these locations are located inside the arm of the dental chair which is connected to our working tray. The constant air and water pressure along the small tubings weakens out the joints or the band along this tubing and it leads to small cracks or punctures along the tubing. Type number two pipe hardening due to edge and wear and tear. This phenomenon mainly affects the whole or the majority of the length of the tubing. It causes either multiple cracks or leakages in the tubing or many a times the whole tubing breaks completely from multiple locations. This mainly occurs due to the aging or hardening of the plastic material of the tube such type of damage or phenomenon occurs in every type of plastic material or plastic tubing with time. Also climate conditions like high temperature fluctuations can facilitate such type of phenomenon and cause the damage sooner to the tubings. Our next point is easy and simple steps to repair such types of leakage yourself. The steps of repairs are step number one, stop the water flow. Doctors, as soon as any type of water leakage occurs from any part of the dental chair, we strongly suggest you to follow the three-step protocol as discussed by us in video number part one. And by following this three-step protocol, 
you can immediately stop the water flow and also prevent further damages to the electrical components of circuits of your dental chair. Step number two is inspection. Doctors now check the site or the location of the water leak and here there can be two possibilities once you find the site of the leakage. The damage can be type 1, one or two small crack or puncture at the junction or anywhere on the tube or the damage can be of type 2 that is multiple cracks along the full length of the tube or tube has completely broken down at multiple locations. Next step number 3 coming to the solution part in case of type 1 damage the repair steps will be number 1 cut at the area of the small puncture with the help of blade or a scissor I would recommend you all to use brass joiner for the water leakage and pneumatic joiner for air leaks. But as discussed earlier, in case of emergency, they both work fine in any case of leakage. The next and very important step is to confirm a good and the tight fitting of the joiner with the tube. In case of water leak, since brass joiners give a good tight fitting, we would suggest you to use brass joiners in case of water leakages. And here, while using the brass joiners with any type of tubing, additional tightening support is must to be provided onto the tubing along with the brass joiner. And this additional tightening can be provided by using any of the following idea. Number one, type in. In case of placing a tie pin, we suggest you to tie the tie pin away from the joint of the flexible pipe and then push the tie pin with the help of your fingers or pliers onto the brass joint area to get additional tightness on the pipe. Second, brass wire. It is always a good idea to save or keep some of the waste or the remaining electrical wires in your dental clinic. Many a times in case of shortages of tie pin or a bigger size pipe, you can easily pull out the copper wire from the electric wires and tie out such copper wires on the brass joint to give them additional support or tightness. Doctors, please try to remain conscious about the amount of force or the amount of tightness you give with such brass wire on the tube because excessive turning of the brass wire on the plastic tubing can lead to tearing of the plastic tubing and also can cause leaks in future. So adequate amount of force should be used to tighten the tubings while using copper wires. Third is big size pipe. This is one of the most common type of trick that is used by most of the technician while setting up a new dental chair. In this technique, a 4 mm pipe, that is a pipe with the outer diameter of 4 mm, is additionally covered with a small piece of 6 mm pipe, which has the inner diameter of 4 mm. And this 6 mm pipe with 4 mm inner diameter is gently pushed onto the junction or the connection area. So similarly, a 2 mm pipe can be covered with a 4 mm pipe. But in case of the biggest size that is used in dental chair, that is 8 mm by 6 mm, it is more advisable to use either the tie tags or brass wire to tighten the big size tubings. Now the next is type 2 damage and its repairs. Doctors, in type 2 damages, it is always good and a best option to go for changing of the whole tubing from end to end. Sometimes in few cases or very long extending tubings along the dental chair, it becomes difficult for the dentist to change the whole tubing themselves. In such cases, we would suggest the dentist to first inspect the site of leakage and also with the help of bending of the tube at every 2 cm try to check out how much of the tubing has been damaged. And once all the crackling or the hard tubing or the damaged tubing is removed, 
we would suggest them to take the same length of new tubing and connect joiners on both the side of this new tubing and connect them to the two ends of the healthy tubing that is remaining in the dental chair. But doctors, after performing such repair, you should consider such repairs as emergency repairs only and we would strongly suggest you to immediately contact a technician and change out the whole tubing from end to end as soon as possible. Also an important point to remember here is, it is always considered an ideal situation or a criteria on what type of tubing to be considered as a healthy or as the ones which will last longer. So whenever you come across any such bad tubings, try to compress or try to bend out the ends of the tube at the interval of every 2 centimeters. And once such type of crackling completely stops and you come across a soft tubing, then such type of soft tubing can be considered as ideal for use and they can work well in the chair for a few more years. Doctor, I always advise my every student and I also follow the same rule at my dental clinic and I would strongly suggest you to form a habit of doing the same thing with your dental chair also. I would strongly recommend you all to change the complete tubing of your dental chair at an interval of 3 to 5 years depending on your use and also on your geographic locations. Doctors, in general, changing out the complete tubing of your dental chair along with the labor charge of the technician can cost you maximum 5000 rupees. But this 5000 rupees, according to me, are the well spent money. Doctors, as dentists, we are nothing without our dental chair. And if you try to cheap out on this 5000 rupees, there is going to be an accidental water leakage any time in the future. And in such cases, if you are not aware or not smart enough to perform the protocols which I have suggested, the water leakage can lead to more electronic components damages. And this will ultimately lead to higher expenses. And at that point of time, you will definitely agree with me that spending 5000 rupees for changing out the tubing is a money well spent. So please form a habit of changing the entire tubings of your dental chair at regular intervals. Also doctors, as dentists, our dental chair is an area or a place of worship or prosperity or in more common words, it is an area or a Lakshmiji for us and it is always a good and beneficial point to take care of our area of prosperity or our temple or Lakshmiji in our dental clinic and by taking a good care of such area of prosperity or Lakshmiji of our dental clinic it can definitely bring us more prosperity. Doctors, if you are somewhat familiar on how to use the tools which I have suggested and also on removing and refitting of the tubing then the changing of the complete tubing of your dental chair is not that a difficult task. The one of the helpful trick which I would suggest you is whenever I open up any new instrument or equipment, I make it a point to take good pictures and also videos so that I know in future what were the normal connections and which wire and which tubings were connected at which location. So once you open out the connections, at the time of refitting or at the time of giving new connections, you can have a reference picture or a reference video and this will help you out to get the exact or perfect connections again and you can avoid any mistakes or cross connections. So doctors, next time if you take it a point to change the tubing of your dental chair and if there is multiple tubes to be required to be changed, just take few good quality pictures and then start your repair process. And doctors, this brings us to our last point that is point number 12. How to dry circuits or equipments if water spills on it. So doctors, up till now we had our tools ready, we had our components ready, we had our joiners and tubings ready and then we have inspected our site of leakage and then depending on the type of damage we did the repairing of the 
tubings also but many a times such type of leakages are at a location where additional electronic components are available in very close proximities and as discussed in our video one if you are smart enough to follow our protocols then the amount of water spillage or leakage on such electric components can be minimal but still supposingly if some amount of water has spilled on your electronic circuits or components i would suggest you all to take care of the following points and also how to dry out such circuits so that we can easily avoid any short circuits in our electronic components so in order to dry any circuit which has water on it i would suggest you all to use our three way syringes and the air from our compressor doctors i have seen many technicians or dentist using air dryer to dry out the water from the circuits doctors please remember air dryer uses heat and gives out warm air while in case of our air compressor the air is at normal temperature many a times if drying is not done properly the air dryer can lead to the heat damage to the circuit components or the wirings and also can melt out few of the connections so it is always ideal to use your three way syringe air to dry out your circuits or equipments of your dental chair the most common location for such type of water spillage to happen is in our dental chair working tray area this area has major components like our micromotor controls our scaler controls and many of the voltage controls which are necessary to power up our dental chair functions like up and down etc also in under this working tray area there are multiple cross connections and divisions of connections of water supply and air supply and with more number of connections there are more chances of cracks or breakages happening in such area so any time whenever there is water drops coming from your dental chair working tray area you should take it very seriously and follow our three step protocol also doctors please take minimum of 10 to 15 minutes to dry out the circuit don't hurry this process and after this i would suggest if possible stop your work for that day and let it dry out at normal temperature for few hours or at least one night and one important point to remember is don't start your dental chair immediately because still there is some amount of moisture present on the circuit okay and moisture is one of the worst enemy for any electronic component so if possible try to avoid working for that particular day and shift your appointment for the next day or be very particular and dry out your circuit area very carefully and at least for 15 to 20 minutes and then only start your dental chair if utmost necessary so doctors i hope the following points help you out in case of water leakage or any damage and also if it happens you are aware now on what steps to follow and what things to keep in mind and also regarding the armamentarium that is tools and components required for such repairs and if such damages occur then how to take care of your important electronic components or circuits so doctors that's all from me on this topic of dental chair repairs water leakages a small notice for all knowledge and through dentist we at aksar dental academy are very soon going to conduct a special class on root canal treatment this will be a live online course and it will cover the a to z of root canal treatment but the main highlights will be how to convince a patient to go for a good quality root canal treatment how to provide a effective and a long lasting root canal treatment the basic steps of root canal treatment simplified for every dentist and how to perform a root canal treatment with techniques and files which have the great chances of success and almost zero chances of any type of post operative complications like file breakages or pain after rct 
Doctors, I, with my experience of more than 11 years, I would practically show you how it's done and also I will share with you my tips and tricks on how I perform my root canal treatment and how I manage complications or issues that might arise and how I easily avoid many of the majority complications that occurs in root canal treatment with any of the new dentist. So contact us on our WhatsApp number for more details. If you want to learn root canal treatment along with the practical tips and tricks to become master in root canal treatment and that too in the most simplified and easiest manner possible. So it is a great opportunity for you to become master in root canal treatment and hence we always suggest be smart, choose smart and become smart. I have a smart opportunity for you all. If you are a dentist who is facing some or the other complications after the root canal treatment and if you want perfect and most accurate guidelines to perform the most comfortable and the accurate root canal possible and also to gather this information in the most simplest and easiest manner possible then here is a good opportunity for your knowledge and through dentist contact us on our whatsapp number for more details so doctors see you all in yet another interesting dental video very soon until then stay tuned to the channel thank you